Steam has a problem. No, it's not privacy concerns, and no, it's not something bad Lord Gaben did. It's an influx of low-quality Backrooms games. I'm gonna assume you know what the Backrooms are, if you don't pause and read this, but if there's one thing that absolutely took over the internet over the past year or two, it's a Backrooms. From a silly little creepypasta to an entire cinematic universe, it's really turned into something greater than I think anyone ever expected. And of course when you have something explode in popularity like this, you have people who make games about it and the backrooms are the perfect topic to make a horror game about. If you go on Steam and simply search backrooms, you get an endless amount of low quality cash grab games with less than favorable reviews. Most of these games miss what made the original backrooms image and other liminal spaces so eerie. It's that sense of dreamlike familiarity where you recognize the image of place, but in a foggy distant memory. It's nostalgic, but in a melancholy way. The lack of people, the dim lighting, it makes you feel unsettled. But if you were to open any Backrooms game on Steam, it's just cheap jump scares from these entities being based on the Kame Pixels Backroom series. I'm not hating on Kame Pixels, I think his series is absolutely incredible, but he took the idea of the Backrooms and made his own story and world out of it. It transcends the spooky 4chan posts, and most Backrooms games that are out there are just blatantly copying that world. There's no more originality. I wanted to make fun of these games in this video, but in my search for games to use, I found something within the backrooms. I was immediately intrigued by the PS1 graphics, the liminal world spaces, and the nostalgic dreamy soundtrack. Sure, it was a bit more expensive than the other games on Steam, but something about it just called me. There's hardly anyone who's talked about the game, with only 38 reviews on Steam and 3 videos I could find on YouTube mentioning it, one being the game's trailer. I had to make a video on it. I don't make video essays, I don't want to make video essays, but I feel like I need to make a video essay on this game, and it needs to get out there, so please share this video and get people talking about within the backrooms, because we're about to embark on a very special experience. After starting the game, it opens in this room, which is the main menu. There's not much in the way of options, only start and delete save. And there's only one save in the game. Not that you'll need more than one though, because it takes roughly an hour to complete. And over here are the credits, and yes, this was made by one person, Andrew Brennis. It was also composed by Easy. you could check out all the music from the game on his YouTube channel right here. But there's nothing left to do except start the game, and here we are, in the backrooms. We aren't told why we're here, and there's no clear story. All we have to go off of is what we find exploring. For example, here we find an interesting structure containing a floppy disk. What's the disk purpose? Who knows? That's the first part of this game that really sticks out. There's no explanation for anything presented to you, and it forces you to think about why what's happening is happening, and it also entices you to explore more to get the answers. Like right here, we find this room with just a chair. You can't collect it, or sit on it, or move it, it's just there. And why? Well, upon exploring further, we find another room with a table, three chairs, and no roof. Does the chair belong here? Who put it here? Is there someone else here? Then over here we find this massive room with a sole computer in the middle also on a chair, and in it we find Memory 43 which details an examination report. Subject had recovered from the comatose state. Upon recovery nearly all forms of memory had been forgotten or altered. Subject remained completely deaf, but otherwise the results were satisfactory, and the health of the subject was stable. Two weeks following recovery the subject expired from unknown circumstances. The cause of this is still being investigated, but as of now, there is no clear answer. Who is performing this experiment, and why was the report of it in the backrooms? This opens up the only form of story that this game has. Not only that, but also the only explanation of why we're here. Most backrooms games or films implement the concept of no clipping out of reality, like the original 4chan post talked about, but this gives us a different explanation. Were we part of some experiment removing our memories? Were we made deaf and is this maybe the result of a comatose state? Questions are flowing and behind this corner is a little hole in the roof. Upon entering it, there's nothing but static until we look around and what the fuck is that? And even more what the fuck is that? Oh hey, thanks for stopping by. Don't mind my friend over there, he'll be fine. Well, uh, Alex seems to be a nice anchor, but in contrast, his friend is a rusty anchor who says nothing. Over here we find the first item of the game, a crowbar, and you can definitely see the retro FPS influence it's pulling from. And there's just so many interesting corners to these backrooms, from this pit that plays an ominous sound to 
this endless hallway, to slopes and invisible walls, this is how the back room should be in a game. It makes me want to explore more to find the next secret area or item. We use our crowbar to break the wall, and speaking of secret areas, we find the stage, which is just a small auditorium with a single chair. No music plays, and there's nothing else in the room. I could go all English teacher mode and talk about what it may represent, but I'll let you guys think about that for yourself, because a lot of the stuff in this game I think is very much up to interpretation. There's nothing handed to you bluntly. It's a story you have to make up in your head with the clues that you're given, and the whole feel of the backrooms and liminal spaces just go perfectly with this idea. This game is incredibly similar to a game on the PS1 called LSD Dream Emulator, a surreal exploration game created by the artist Osamu Sato. The game consists of dreams that display very surreal environments and NPCs, and the comparisons to within the backrooms are pretty easy to see. LSD Dream Emulator was in a way the first backrooms game with the different dreams giving off the same aura of the liminal spaces the backrooms are based off. Within the backrooms is the closest thing we have to a modern spiritual successor to LSD Dream Emulator, and I absolutely love it. Watching videos of LSD Dream Emulator when I was younger made the game and its visuals stick with me. It was such a unique and esoteric idea, paired with my personal history of having some pretty weird dreams. It's something I really connected with. Comparing within the backrooms to LSD Dream Emulator, it really makes me think maybe the overarching story is that this is a dream. Maybe we are in a coma like the patient described on the floppy disk, and maybe we are dead. We find a key to the elevator and use it, and it teleports us to an 80s-esque mall with bright neon lights and pastel blue on the roof. The stores are all closed up and there's nothing to do but explore. We come across this food court area with tables empty of chairs, except for a few, and this large quarter we collect. We insert it in this gumball machine to get a key, one we can use to open the closed up shops and explore further. In this first one we find this jumbled pile of chairs. Did they belong to the tables in the food court? In the store opposite to this one there's nothing but a red ominous door, and inside is this downright hideous collection of rooms. There's nothing inside any of them except for the Jackson Pollock S testers, which yet again begs the question, what is the purpose of all of this? We leave the space and look for our next storefront to explore. This one contains a huge area full of empty shelves, and at the end we find another floppy disk. The next storefront opens to a blank wall. There's no room behind it, and it's just a wall and nothing else. Next we come across this hall full of doors akin to a hotel room, with a room near the end labeled Heaven's Waiting. You are not welcome here yet. Well that was interesting. We spoke to an angel, one that was biblically accurate. Was that really heaven? Why are we not welcome? Anyways, going into the next store, there's nothing to see really, but this next one has a wall we could tear down with a crowbar and another coin to collect. The next store is also mostly empty except for some abandoned racks and shelves, and the next one is the same deal. And yet again the same for this final one. The next hallway is another dead end with nothing but lockers and a closed door at the end, which leaves us with one final hall with more stores to explore. This one is absolutely massive with seemingly nothing in it, until I found this gumball machine with another floppy disk in it. It also played what sounded like a fire alarm noise. The next room is this arcade with another coin in it, very fittingly, and not really anything else to it except this arcade screen on the floor. This store has absolutely nothing but another gumball machine with a doorknob, and the final store in this area has a computer monitor we can use to read the next memories. Memory 14003 states, Subject has seemingly forgotten date of birth and lost all sense of hearing. Hearing seems to be irreparable. Results are promising but not yet satisfactory. Any attempts of XXX must be stopped immediately. We next stumble upon this playground with a collectible bag of chips, definitely the oddest item we've picked up. You can't do anything with it, it's just a bag of chips. Onwards we go and here is a door with no doorknob. Pretty easy fix and we are in what seems to be an old Chuck E. Cheese like facility. And we also get a flashlight. Up on this ramp are these brightly colored tubes and slides. And I vaguely remember stuff like this from places like Chuck E. Cheese as a kid, but there's something off about these. You could again see the little bits of Half-Life inspiration, and I went in circles for a while until I found this weird statue of an octopus. There's no way to interact it, and it's blocking whatever's behind it. There may be a way to move it, but I'll let you guys explore that on your own playthrough. But there's nothing else to see in this space, so I went back down to continue. There's a children's birthday party type table and this large area with the same octopus we saw in the pipes. And around this corner is yet another computer terminal. We look at memory 17902 which states, Subject has shown no changes in memory following experimentation. Further intensive experimentation will be carried out following recovery. In this door we get transported to this room with floral wallpaper and an anime girl at the end. Now this is weird. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be here. I don't think this is the tower. 
What's the tower in? And why aren't they supposed to be here? Exiting the door, we were in this classic backrooms-like maze again, only this time with floral wallpaper all around us. There's nothing really to note in this maze, and eventually we find the door, where we can leave and return back to the children's play area that we were at before. Through this tunnel, we see the sun with an open mouth, and this is a direct reference to LSD Dream Emulator, which has a very similar area. Entering the mouth of the sun, we reach this marbled area with a layer of water all across the floor. This is the pool, and is going to be the final area we explore in the game. I'm leaving out a lot more than there is to discover, and initially I wanted to 100% every area of the game. But after watching this video, I want you guys to still experience the game for yourself, and have some more areas to discover that are fresh. I also didn't want to play the game three times in a row and burn myself out on it. We found another computer terminal at the end of this long hallway, which we'll come back to later. And also this huge open room with these smaller pools in the center area. And then the hallway with the dead end, but if we walk through the wall... Oh, hello there. I'm not sure how you found me, but cheers mate. I'm getting a bit hungry. Do you think you have anything? Oh, well, we picked up those chips earlier, so I gave them to him and... Wow, thank you. I'm not sure if I can eat these, but I appreciate the thought mate. He has this very odd eating animation and I love these types of characters. It's a better twist on the entities from the Kane Pixels universe. We also find another floppy disk and it has memory 862 which notes. Subject has entered a comatose state following experimentation. Subject is non-responsive to all forms of stimuli administered. Subject will be monitored closely. This is super similar to the other memories and further cements my theory that we're actually one of these non-responsive patients. This is just a dream we're experiencing. Maybe we are in a coma and our surroundings are just based off what's actually around us. We just are perceiving them based on a dreamlike state we're in. Going around this corner we spot a harsh red glow and upon investigating we find an entrance to a forest. Inside it's a maze of trees with the red hue and static noises playing. This is the first area of the game that jarred me, it's so out of place when compared to everything else. It feels like it isn't meant to be here, but when looking at the bigger picture, every location has this eerie feel. It's almost accumulated in the forest. All the nightmares we've been escaping have finally caught up to us in the forest, and it's a way of facing them head on. After leaving the forest we come across a staircase, and going up it we find a huge room with a hole in the middle. With no other options we jump down, and here's the end. It's in a library. Again, like all the other areas, it's similar to a popular backrooms image. There's a computer on the desk, and opening it shows all the memories we collected. And if we click on a memory... This is just one of 11 different endings, and all have a really cool liminal space and these slightly cryptic but motivational messages. You could spend hours finding all the floppy disks and getting all the endings, and there's achievements for all of them. And that was pretty much all there was to within the backrooms, and it's by far the best backrooms game I've played. The gameplay in world spaces just fit the idea of liminal spaces so perfectly. I'd love to see the developer work more on it and develop more games in the future that have to do with liminal spaces akin to LSD Dream Emulator. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Spread the word, enjoy your lives. Just fucking do it, damn it!